Howdy y'all, got the Bulldog on the channel. I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but we'll see. We got a later model Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's a 2016, I believe. Checking the fluid and the transmission is an ordeal. So we're gonna get into it and see. I've gotta let it sit here. The customer brought it down. He doesn't live but three or four miles away, but it warmed up on his way down here. You can only check this transmission in a 30 degree window between 90 and 120 degrees. Fortunately, we don't have to hook the computer up because in the dash, it has a transmission temp sensor and it tells us where it is. It's at 140 right now. So it's got to cool off 30 degrees before we can even check it. Now I'm going to get it up in the air and I'll show you why it's such a nightmare to check this stupid thing. Okay, I'm underneath it, and I was afraid I was going to have to move this belly pan, but it looks like I can get to the plug okay here. Uh, this plug is an Allen, but somebody has used a Torx bed in it, and I'm not sure. I'll, I'll probably use the same thing. It probably fits tighter. But we got to wait for it to cool down because now it's over. It's going to be over full, even if it's nothing behind this it won't take enough fluid because the fluid is at 140 degrees and it's got to be below 120, between 90 and 120 in order to check with it running. Now there's quite a procedure uh, to do this and something that in the video that I watched, uh, it was a, a guy that works on uh, these things you know, regularly. Uh, he warned us about a thermostatic bypass that's up by the engine on the cooling lines and they ran into it more because they are they have the transmission out and then they flush out that cooler well they don't mention it in your service procedure for checking the transmission well that would be you know nice uh, it doesn't open up until it's like 160 degrees so if your cooler's empty because of service work, this procedure won't catch that. You have to check it, add fluid, drive it, get it all warmed up so that it's flowing through that cooler like it's supposed to, then stop it, let it cool off, which takes hours and hours and hours, then bring it back and do this procedure again. So it's a two day process. This guy got here early. Uh, it's 11 o'clock now, and it's still 140 degrees. That's nice. I didn't think it was going to heat up that quickly because he's he's local. He's real close. But he did, you know, drop it off, have somebody come get him so that it could sit there because he knew. He, he actually sent me the video on uh, checking this thing, so... We're going to hurry up and wait. I wanted to make sure uh, how to get to this. It's conveniently located right next to the exhaust pipe. So there's that. In other applications, they use this same transmission and they were talking about having to remove the prop shaft. It's on the other side on this. It's not gonna interfere at all. All right, it is not cool enough. But we're gonna check it anyway got fired up he's going to shift it around the gears a little bit and I'll pull this plug out and see if it's overtly low it's at 123 degrees right now it has a whole shift procedure and uh, everything in it. We'll let it cool off and do a good check. Okay, there's fluid in it. But it is dribbling out. Just dribbling out. Alright! So it is probably low. Because we're at the high end and we're not doing the entire procedure for checking it.
You say 109? All right, we wait until after lunch so that this can cool all the way down. It's not all the way down, it's at 100, 109 degrees right now. But we're gonna go ahead, we've got a quarter fluid and a, a way to put it in there. He's gonna start it up, run it through the procedure and at the full procedure this time, and then we'll recheck it. Go ahead. Start it up, put it in reverse for five seconds with the wheels not moving. Turn the tra traction control off first. Put it in reverse for five seconds. Then you shift it to drive for five seconds, not letting the wheels move. Then accelerate in drive to second gear and hold it for five seconds. Then shift it into neutral and Raise it up to 2,000 RPM. Rev it up. That bleeds all the air out of the valves inside the transmission. Wasn't hardly low at all, took about half a pint. When I first took the plug out, it was there, but just dribbling, you can't count on that. It needs to come out in pretty much a solid stream. This is why doing this stuff is so difficult. It's just, they have a procedure in there, but it really doesn't bother telling you exactly what situation this procedure is working for. What they're talking about is you've had service work done to the transmission and you're redoing it after you've had the pan off, after you've had it apart, after you've rebuilt it. But this thing is just a fluid check. It's in service. They had a problem where it felt like it was slipping when it's at a certain angle, which being low on fluid could cause that. So. This was just a precautionary measure. It had had service work done before. They wanted to make sure it was done right and been, been filled. Now this is something that was come up with, you know, an educated college graduate that knows more than I do. I always thought it was just really a lot simpler to pull a dipstick and look at it. But I know I rag on them guys quite a bit, but we're the ones out here in the real world that have to deal with this stuff. We have to do these procedures. This, this is a five minute job. That took four hours because it had to sit around and cool off and be at a specific temperature. This has been going on for years. You know, the old TH350, TH400, uh, C6, they were all, you know, in a general range, yeah, it's not a big deal. 
because they had tolerance. With these transmissions, there is no tolerance. That's why this customer is so insistent to get this checked because he knows it is a lot of money if you use a little bit. Like, comment, subscribe, hit your little bell notification, share it all around. Talk to you later.